TypeScript just released the feature complete beta of version 5.6. So let's discover all the new features together. So well, let's get started with the first feature, the disallowed knowledge or truthy checks. So we are currently on version 5.5 .5 because we want to see the difference when we switch to the new version. So we say x is zero and we say if x greater or equal one, in this case, we call console log like this and we say inside. Now, when we run this code, we don't expect that we go into this check here because x is zero, right? So let's run this and we can see we go inside. So why is this? Because the problem here is that we made a mistake here. We created an arrow function instead of a check. So if we change it, this would of course not enter this clause here, but this can easily happen that we just pass in an error function like this. And prior to version 5.6, we did not get any errors in this case. But let's now change this to version 5.6 and let's see what happens. And we can see we get an error because when we see here, this kind of expression is always truthy. Now TypeScript can check for truthy checks and can figure out if we maybe made a mistake by showing us this kind of errors. Now, of course, TypeScript does not stop there. We can say, let's say we have an is valid function and this takes just a variable of any kind and we say return L is greater than 100, for example. Now, when we call this with is valid 100 or is valid 200, we can see we get an error again because we misplaced our parentheses. We can see here, this kind of expression is always truthy because we have misplaced the parentheses and we check basically this here, which will always be true. So what we can do now is we can add the parentheses here and remove this over here. And we can see now the code compiles fine. But of course we can still do stuff like this. We can still use while true because TypeScript figures out that we will really want to do this and this is not a mistake. So TypeScript will not stop us from doing that. We also are allowed to do stuff like this if true or is valid like this, because sometimes for debugging purposes or to inspect what in a if branch happens, we want to do this to debug our code. Now, TypeScript still allows us to do this stuff, but it still helps us wherever it can to prevent us writing code which has bugs in it. And I really like this. So the next thing I want to show you is how they changed the iterators and how they made the iterators much more powerful, in my opinion. So let's say we have a function here, and this is a function called generate numbers. And we will create numbers in here every time we call this function it should emit a new number. So we say let i equals one and then we say while true we yield the value here and we say i plus plus like this. Now, when we now switch back to version 5.5 .5 to see how it worked prior, we can see when I use generate numbers here as a function, we have only access to next basically, and we can just loop over our generator. So this changes with TypeScript 5.6 because let's change the version here to version 5.6. And when we now check what we can use, we can see we have so many more options here. We have drop, every filter, find, and so on. And this is exactly what TypeScript did it added more functionality to the iterator. So this is really awesome and makes it so much easier to work with this because what you now can do, for example, is you can say const even numbers and we then say generate numbers map and we then say x, x times two like this. And what we now can also do is we can, for example, say first five and then we say even numbers take five like this and then we can spread them into an array like this. And when we then run the code, we can see we get two, four, six, eight, and 10. So really, really cool that we now can work with these like with streams and we don't have to handle them like manually or like wrap them in an array first, but we can just work on this iterators like this. Now, when we check what map here returns, we can see this is so-called built-in iterator. This is a new type TypeScript added to the language to make it possible to use map, drop, filter, and so on on it. Now, of course, what they also did is they even changed these existing iterable types to built in iterator for things like map, for example. So what we can do now is if we remove this and say map new map here, we can see that if we now check what we have on map, entries, we can see when we check the type, this is a built-in iterator. Prior to that, this was not a built-in iterator, so we could not do stuff like drop every filter and so on. So let's see what it was prior. If we change this back to version 5.5, .5, we can see here 
that this is only an iterable iterator. So basically they changed the iterable iterator to built-in iterator to allow us to do such stuff. So really, really cool. So they changed all these types where they had the control over the typings. So for all the lib, for example, they changed it. But of course there are libraries where they don't have control over because they are third-party libraries. And they also provide a way to convert iterables to these iterators. So let me show you how we can do this. So what we can say, for example, is we have a 10 counter here, and this is of type iterable number. And we say here we have a symbol, which is an iterator here. And we can now say this is a function, of course, because an iterator symbol always takes a function. And we then say let n is zero to start with zero and then count up. And then we say return next because every iterator here needs to return an object which has a next function. And now what we can do here is we say n plus equal 10 to add 10 to the n variable here. And then we say return value n and done it's when n equals 100 basically. So now because of that, when we have the 10 counter, we still don't have access on these filters and so on. So when we now switch this to version 5.6 again, we can now say iterator from and we can use the 10 counter here. And because of that, now we have our iterator, which prior was just an iterable. So we could convert them to an iterator and work with it like we would with a normal iterator, which was provided from TypeScript itself. So really cool. Now, before we go to the next topic, I want to show you how they also enhanced the iterator itself by using the built-in iterator return type. So let's just have this function here, which is called uppercase, and it takes an iterator as a parameter here, and this emits strings, basically. Now, the problem with this was that when it's done, it would always return any, basically. So what happens here is when I say, for example, true, while true, we then say const value and done. So we extract the values here from next. And when we now say yield value dot two, we can see that we don't get auto completion because this could also be any in this case. So uppercase like this, because when we check the iterator here, we can see the default value here for the return is any. So string or any then always defaults to any. So because of that, we don't have any auto completion. So, and then we say if done, then we return just and don't return anything. Now, prior to version 5.6, this was not possible. Now we can see still in version 5.6, we still don't get any error here. So we can change this and we can say we want to have the new intrinsic type for the return. So we can say built in iterator return like this. And we can see still no error, right? Because we need to enable a flag TypeScript provides. So we can go into our TS config file and we say here strict built-in iterator return. And if we change this to true and we save this, we can now see we get an error because TypeScript figures out, okay, this here is a string and here to uppercase needs an uppercase C. So we can change this here to an uppercase C and we can see now the code compiles fine. So this also provides a way of having like type safe return types of our iterator types. And I really like this approach because it shows again what TypeScript can do to help us to write error-free code basically. So the next feature for many people will be more of a gimmick or like a party trick, but it will not be used by many, but it can be useful when working with other languages, like for example, with WebAssembly. And this is maybe why they added it to the language. So what you can do is we can say import and now we can import some really cool stuff. We can say we want to import a rocket as rocket from anything here. So this was not possible prior to version 5.6 because now they also support arbitrary module identifiers. So not just normal strings, but they also support emojis and other arbitrary module identifiers. So this is something maybe not many will use, but it can help to interact with other languages, for example. So this is just like a really small example I wanted to show you from this feature. But the next thing I want to show you is something really cool, I think, and it's also not used by many, but I really like that they added it to the language. So let's say we have a class here and we have this base class and we could now say this as a function here, but we make this a little different. We say foo and we say symbol foo like this. And now we will make a computed function name basically. And then we say foo here and then we could write our function. Now let's say we have a class here extends and this extends our base class like this. Now let's switch back to version 5.5 and let's see the difference here. If I now say override, and I don't use here this const foo, but I copy this and I, for example, create a foo2 here and I say override 
through two like this, we can see I don't get an error. When I would use normal variable names, of course I would get an error, but prior to version 5.6, you would not get an error if you would override a computed function name here, which does not exist basically. So let's change this back to TypeScript 5.6 and see the difference. We now can see that we get an error here because this does not exist on the base class and it also shows us maybe you wanted to take foo. So really cool stuff here. Of course, it's not used by many, I think, and I personally also did not use it in any project yet, but I find it really cool that they added this functionality to check for these overrides when you use computed names for functions. Now, let me show you the last coding feature where we will be active in our coding editor. So let's say we have an import here, and this import is just anything here. This is a so-called side effect import because we will not import anything in our file, but we will just want to call maybe some code which is behind this import here. Now, prior to version 5.6, you had no possibility to check if this path here is valid. We can see here, we are still using TypeScript 5.6, but we can see that we don't get any error. Now we can enable the checking of the path by using a tsconfig file. So we can say here, we add a no unchecked side effects import and we set this to true. Now, if we check our file here, we can see we get an error because we can see cannot find module anything. Now, TypeScript checks if this path exists. But the problem with this is that, for example, sometimes you want to do stuff like this, star.css. Now, this is also not possible now because we enabled the checking of this side effect import. But we can fix this. We can have like a global DTS file and declare a module there. So we can say declare module and we say star.css, basically an empty module here. And when we save this, we can see that this now works. And now TypeScript sees that this exists because we provided them a global type definition for this. So now we talked about all the features which are basically affecting us when we are just writing some code, right? But TypeScript also added some more features which are, for example, for the TypeScript compiler. So the first thing they added is this no check. So this no check flag basically means exactly what you think it does. It will just stop type checking your code when you run your TypeScript compiler. And this can be helpful when you don't want to type check your code. And you can, for example, use this and run this in parallel with no emit. So you have like one task which just does the type checking but does not emit anything and you have one step which does no type checking and just emits your file. So you can for example do this in different tasks or in different phases or in parallel basically. Now maybe you don't need it that often but it's a nice thing that you can choose if you want to enable or disable this type checking. So one thing which they also changed is the behavior of the build flag. You could think about when you had a project A and B and a project A had a dependency on project B, when you compiled them using the build flag, then the problem was that it immediately stopped when, for example, a dependency had an issue, had an error in there. So because of that, you then had to fix the project B first because of the dependency the project A had. So this will now change because TypeScript will no longer stop compiling if it found such an error in one of the projects, but it will do like its best to compile everything that it's possible. And I really like this and I think it will make it much easier so that you can, for example, if you're migrating something, they don't have to do like project B first because project A depends on it. Something other which they added, which is also really cool, is region prioritized diagnostics. So what does this mean? So let's say you have this huge TypeScript file and for example, TypeScript itself has files with over 50,000 lines of code, but you're only working on a small portion of the file currently. It can take around three to four seconds to run all the checks on your code. And with these region checks, basically, TypeScript can make this much, much faster by just checking the part where you're in currently first. So TypeScript was checking how fast it went when it used this in VS Code because this region this region checking currently works in VS Code with version 5.6 and they had a huge speed improvement because prior to that, their large files, the checker TS file, it took around three and a half seconds to run the check on it. And after this, it took around 100 milliseconds. So it made it much, much faster to work with. And maybe this is something which is not used by many people, but if you're working with like really large files, then it will really help you if you use VS Code. Another cool new feature when you work with complex projects is that 
handling of the TS config search. So currently it's the case that TypeScript just goes up the file tree and searches for the TS config. And if it finds one, it will just stop looking for further ones. In version 5.6, what it will do is it will go further up the tree. If it finds a TS config, it will search higher up in the tree and will also then do the best to find which TS config works for your project and which it has to use. This is also helpful if you have like a TS config for tests or a TS config for app or so on. And because of that, TypeScript can now figure out itself much better which TS config to choose from. And the last thing is something which is also something which is done like under the hood and maybe we will not see that much in our daily life as a TypeScript developer. But what they also added is that they can now properly figure out if a module in node modules is a common JS file or a ES module file. So prior to version 5.6, it was really hard for TypeScript to figure out if a library in node modules is either ESM or a common JS module. Now they implemented some functionality so that it can generate correct common JS or ESM code. And so for example, that you don't have like unsafe imports or stuff like this. So something which is a little bit under the hood and maybe is not that exciting for many people, but I think this will really help in adopting ESM even better than TypeScript already did it currently. So these were all the features of the new TypeScript 5.6 beta. Let me know which of the features you liked most in the comments. And if you liked the video, please leave a like. And if you want to know more about TypeScript and stay up to date for future videos, please also subscribe to the channel and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.